This is our first ever bad hair day on the channel. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if I said nothing, you wouldn't have even clocked it, right? Okay. What's a good, you guys? What's up? Welcome, welcome back. Hey, if you're new, I'm Chanel. You've clicked on my reaction and commentary channel. This is the channel where we watch movies together, and I just let you know what's going on in my head the whole time I'm watching them. My favorite thing about my channel is that I call out filmmaker elements because that's my favorite way to watch a movie. And let's see what else you got. I don't know, deadpan deliveries. Anyway, that's the spiel. Don't forget to stick around to the end of one of my videos because together we do the IMDb movie trivia, which is my favorite part of any movie watching experience. Today's video is going to be A Few Good Men from 1992. This has come recommended so so many times on my channel. Let's try to think why. A, people know I'm obsessed with Tom Cruise and I know Tom Cruise is in it. I just did a tiny bit of preliminary research. I don't really like to know much, but I do know this is a courtroom drama because that's what it says on the genre. Obsessed. Written by Sorkin. Holy wow. Yeah, so director Rob Reiner. We've had Rob Reiner on the channel before as a director. He's like a classically great director. So I know that that's why A Few Good Men has come recommended to me. Definitely from our Rob Reiner stuff, our Princess Bride and our This Is Spinal Tap. So I totally get it. I totally understand. Cruz and guys, Aaron Sorkin. We have not done an Aaron Sorkin penned feature on the channel yet. And that is the biggest tragedy of them all. It's absolutely shocking. I love Aaron Sorkin's dialogue. I love it. It is so much. It's fast. I know for a fact his screenplays end up pages and pages longer than most because there are so many words on the page. So it's a military courtroom drama. I don't know anything beyond that. And it'll be really interesting to see how Aaron Sorkin writes these characters. I'm going to probably be falling for all of them. And I bet all of them, he writes smart, smart, smart people. So I just feel like I'm going to have my mind changed and convinced. Whoever's speaking, I think, is going to really have me. And those are my predictions for a Sorkin-penned courtroom drama directed by Rob Reiner. Beyond that, if you want to catch my full-length watch, don't forget to join me on Patreon. Description box below for that. Don't forget, uh, we go live once a month. So last Friday and every month, I would love to see and hear from you. And without further ado, let's get right into today's video, which is A Few Good Men from 1992. Guantanamo Bay. No! Okay, ominous. Who just got kidnapped? T. Cruz. Kevin freaking Bacon. Christopher Guest is in this? Jane Jenkins, Janet Hutchinson, the world famous dynamic casting duo. Based on his play. Sorkin wrote it as a play first. Captain, I'd like to request that it be me who's the attorney. That it be myself. No, I'd like to request that it be I who am assigned. Good ground. That it be I? <laughs> Joe, come on in. Thank you, sir. Joe, lady with a boy name. How very Top Gun of us. And Santiago was known to be a screw up. I was thinking it sounded an awful lot like a code red. Code red. Uh, that it be me uh, who is assigned to represent them. Commander, I'd like you to leave the room so we can talk about you behind your back. There we go. Certainly, sir. Spot on. Did you see that little stumble she did? So it is so Sorkin to have just have that written in. I promise you, Division will sign the right man for the job. All right, let's go. Let's get to. <laughs> right man for the job cuts to Tom Cruise. Right. We were supposed to meet in your office 15 minutes ago to talk about the McDermott case. You're stalling on this thing. What a wise ass. Love Tom Cruise. I'll recommend 30 days in the brig with loss of rank and pay. It was a regular day. What, possession of a condiment? Kathy. Dave, I tried to help you. Possession of a condiment. He's a real wise ass. See misdemeanor, 15 days restricted duty. He's really always just got that maverick attitude. TFC William Santiago threatens to rat on Dawson to the Naval Investigative Service. So I got a stack of papers on my desk about a mile Work hot. with Kathy on this. Doing what? Kathy will have this done in about four days. 
In other words, I have no responsibilities here whatsoever. I don't want to work with Tom Cruise ever. <laughs> Daniel Caffey, I was told to meet with uh, Lieutenant Commander Galloway. Not a briefing? I'll call you back. She's like, this is the clown that they got instead of me. The disrespect that he is showing with this behavior. Have I done something wrong? No. It's just that when I petitioned the vision to have counsel assigned, I was hoping I would be taken seriously. Commander, from what I understand, if this thing goes to court, they won't need a lawyer. They'll need a priest. Oh, they are hoping this thing goes away before they get to court. That's Guantanamo Bay. I knew that one. He wrote to the fleet commander, HQ Atlantic, to the commandant of the Marine Corps, even his senator. He wanted to be transferred off the base. No one was listening. They're really rubbing it in, hiring this guy. I'll get them to drop the conspiracy and conduct unbecoming. 12 years. Read the letters. I'll expect a report when you return from Cuba. Sure. This is going to be a great mashup, to going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The disrespect he is showing her, and they're just going to be like the coolest adversaries. I'm writing to inform you of my problems with my unit here in Cuba and to ask for your help. I'm willing to provide you with information about, about an illegal, illegal fence line shooting that occurred the night of August the 2nd. Oh. Who the f*** is PFC William T. Santiago? He's got info. Because he's written letters to everybody but Santa Claus asking for a transfer. <laughs> Santa Claus. I think perhaps it would be better to hold this discussion in private. That won't be necessary, Colonel. I can handle this situation. There's Kiefer Sutherland. Not only that, but where of this letter's bound to get out, he's going to get his ass whipped. Transfer Santiago. He's dead. Transferring Santiago, while expeditious and certainly painless, might not be in a manner of speaking the American way. Santiago doesn't make 4646 on his next proficiency in conduct report. And I'm going to blame you. I love when I'm given information in close-up. So, so easy to lean in. And I believe that taking a Marine who is not quite up to the job and shipping him off to another assignment puts lives in danger. Sit down, Matthew. Did I miss a time dash like this is a flashback? Isn't Santiago dead? Ugh. I'm so annoyed. Don't ever question my orders in front of another officer. I guess we're toggling back and forth between two timelines now. Courtroom case and what happened. That's my idea. I wanted to talk to you about Corporal Dawson and Private Downey. Dawson and Downey? He's like, who? Those names sound like they should mean something to me. But I'm Dawson, Downey, the clients. He does not give a f this guy. You went to Harvard Law, then you joined the Navy. Probably because that's what your father wanted you to do. If that's the situation, that's fine. I won't tell anyone. Shots. Fired. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I allowed Dawson and Downey to spend any more time in prison than absolutely necessary because their attorney had predetermined the path of least resistance. Good Sorkin speech. 10 out of 10. I'm sexually aroused, Commander. Ugh. It had to be Professor Plum in the library with the candlestick. I'm going to talk to your supervisor. Catch my reaction to Clue, available now. Well, I appreciate your interest and admire your enthusiasm. I think I can handle things myself. I feel so frustrated for her. You know what a code red is? So frustrated for her. <gasps> code red. They think it's a code red. What's a code red? Sir, a code red is a disciplinary engagement. What's that mean exactly? Sir, a Marine falls out of line. It's up to the men in his unit to get him back on track. Sir, a Marine refuses to bathe on a regular basis. The men in his squad would give him a GI shower. Scrub brushes, brillo pads, steel wool. Beautiful. Hazing. Love it. Uh, Private Downey, the rag you stuffed in Santiago's mouth, was there poison on it? No, sir. Silver polish, turpentine. Were you there when the ambulance got there? Ah, was it a code red or not? Harold, I think there's a concept you better start warming up to. Sir? I'm not sir. I'm the only friend you've got. Ooh, this is getting good. This is, there's some information we need. Something. I'm going to give you the 12 years. Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick held a meeting with the men and specifically told them not to touch Santiago. Any luck getting me replaced? Is there anyone in this command that you don't either drink or play softball with? Commander, Listen, what I came to make He's owed a lot of favors, isn't he? You got authorization from Aunt Jenny? I gave her a call like you asked. 
Very nice woman. We spoke for about an hour. Got authorization from Aunt Jenny. I'm going to Cuba with you tomorrow. Yes, the movie I want. Jack Ross came to see me today. He offered me the 12 years. Oh, that's what you wanted, right? I know, and I'll... No, now he wants to fight it. He got a little bit... He got the itch. I get sick when I fly because I'm afraid of crashing into a large mountain. I don't think Dramamine will help. I got some oregano. I heard that works pretty good. Ha <laughs> ha. He said the platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, had a meeting with the men and specifically told him not to touch Santiago. So? Every time the music kicks in, it's like they drop a info bomb on us. We're like, hmm. I never mentioned Kendrick. I don't even know who he is. Hmm. Whoa, hold it. We gotta take a boat? Yes, sir. To get to the other side of the Should have brought that jam, I mean. Jesus Christ, Kathy, you're in the Navy for crying out loud. Nobody likes her very much. Yes, sir. Danny and Joe, Joe and Danny. Obsessed. Daniel Caffey, I'm the attorney for Dawson and Downey. I had the pleasure of meeting your father once. I was a teenager. He spoke at my high school. Lionel Caffey? Did you see that close up? How the hell is your dad, Danny? Dead. He passed away seven years ago, sir. Don't I feel like the fucking asshole? <laughs> Not at all, sir. John will take you out and show you what you want to see. After that, we can all hook up for lunch. Yeah, I want a site inspection. Take me there. Let's go. I love it. I love when movies make me feel like I'm the expert. Like I'm a lawyer today. Santiago had to have had a health condition because he was writing that he was falling behind, seeing spots, all the things. Sam, we should make sure somebody gets this to his parents. We don't need it anymore. No, I like all you Navy boys. Every time we got to go someplace to fight, you fellas always give us a ride. But he is dead because he had no code. He is dead because he had no honor and God was watching. Wow, okay. Are you planning on doing any investigating or are you just going to take the guided tour? He already got his 12 years, but she doesn't know that. Yes. Santiago is going to reveal the person's name in exchange for a transfer. If you feel there are any details that I'm missing, you should feel free to speak up. Now, at this point, you call Lieutenant Colonel Markinson. They're all pulling code. They're all pulling their squad before everything. Santiago is set to be transferred. On the first available flight to the States, 0600 the next morning, five hours too late as it turned out. That's not true, right? He said don't transfer him and I'm making it your problem to get him up to shape, right? I'm just wondering if you've ever heard the term code red. I've heard the term, yes. Point. She often has no points, sir. It's part of her charm. We're out of here. Thank you. My point is that I think code red still go on down here. Truth. From you know, the Colonel. It just hit me. She outranks you. Sir. I want to tell you something and listen up. Just hit me. You want to ask me about code reds on the record? I tell you I discourage the practice in accordance with the commander's directive. Off the record, I tell you it is an invaluable part of close infantry training. Santiago's transport. You guys have paperwork on that No. Nope. I, I just need it for the file. Of course, you can have a copy. Oh, no. They don't have one. You can have all the transfer orders that you want. But you have to ask me nicely. I feel so angry for Joe in this scenario, but I like that he's giving it to Danny now. What I do want is for you to stand there in that uniform and with your Harvard mouth extend me some courtesy. If it's not too much trouble, I'd like a copy of the transfer order. No problem. I say this all the time. When they're that tight on your face, you guys have no idea how still you have to be. And you'll think you're being still. And the doctor will say, don't move your head a millimeter. I'm Loudon Downey's attorney, Aunt Ginny. She said she feels like she's known me for years. So I suggested that she might feel more comfortable if I were directly involved with the case. She had Loudon sign the papers about an hour ago. Ha. I think Kendrick ordered the code red and so do you. Let's go. <sighs> Say, sir, like I just asked you if you clean the latrine. You heard what I said. Did Lieutenant Kendrick order you guys to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Did he? Yep. Yes, sir. You mind telling me why the hell you never mentioned this before? You didn't ask us, sir. 
They're protecting Kendrick. Lieutenant Kendrick ordered us to give Santiago a code red. All these boys are always playing sports when they gotta be working. Or their, their recreational time is being interrupted. Probably true. Kendrick specifically told those men not to touch Santiago. That's right. And then he went into Dawson and Downey's room and specifically told them to give him a code red. No deal, we're going to court. Joe. No, you're not. Why not? Because you'll lose. And he knows that if we do go to court, I'm gonna have to go all the way. They're gonna be charged with a whole truckload. Ugh, a corrupt system just makes you so pissed. Are you guys so angry? I'm on Joe's team. She's like, we're going to court. You're the greatest lawyer in the world. Ooh, how can we ever thank you? We did nothing wrong, sir. We did our job, and if that has consequences, then I'll accept them. Did you... Did she put you up to this? No. We have a code, oh. sir. Did she put you up to this? Do you believe they have a case? <laughs> you and Dawson, you both live in the same dream world. Doesn't matter what I believe or don't believe, it's what I can prove. That's our system. You're a used car salesman, Daniel. You're an ambulance chaser with a rank. You're nothing. It is true. He really didn't get anywhere on any sort of merit. He just, like, is cutting deals with people who think he's charming. Ugh. He calls back 15 minutes later. He says, let's make a deal. We have two more this week. Well, if he gets that transfer order, or no transfer order, or can prove it's fake, or I don't know, there's... That seems like a... That seems like something. Like I said, I love it. I love it when a movie makes me feel like I'm, I'm an expert too. <gasps> Danny, where you at, bro? Dan Dan. Dan Dan the man. <coughs> there that charming motherfucker goes. <laughs> Does defense wish to enter a plea? Yeah. They're not guilty. Enter a plea of not guilty for the accused three weeks from today, at which time... No deal, Kevin Bacon. Suck it. Ah, uh, this is fun. I wish I was watching this movie with some friends, I gotta admit. Like, just some buddies in a room. I think everyone would put their phones down on this one, you know? The only thing I have to eat is you who and Cocoa Puffs, so if you want anything else, bring it with you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so this is what a courtroom looks like. Dead. I love it. The only thing Danny hates worse than like having those two concede is that um, he's been underestimated. You think Dawson and Downey knew it was an illegal order? Any decent human being would have refused. They're not permitted to question orders. Then what's the secret? Truth. Gotta follow orders. But they were comparing this to Nuremberg. That was super interesting. Go our way. Don't hang your head. Don't shift in your seat. Don't scribble furiously. Whatever happens, you have to look like it's exactly what you knew was gonna happen. I love the way that lawyer work is kind of a performance. You pass me documents, do it swiftly, and you'll lay and don't look over anxious. It's acting. Don't wear that perfume in court. Wrecks my concentration. Really? <gasps> I was talking to Sam. What time is it? <laughs> They're gonna hook up. I hate that. I hope they don't. You know I hope they do, actually. I really want to see that. <laughs> but we don't have to make a whole big deal out of it. You like me, I won't make you say it. I was just going to tell you to wear matching socks tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and that's exactly what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> Your Aunt Jenny? Uh-huh. Damn. I was expecting someone older. So was I. <laughs> Aunt Jenny. Oh, I'm excited. The rest of this, this hour that we have left is going to be court stuff. Furthermore, the government will also demonstrate that the accused soaked the rag in poison and entered Santiago's room with motive and intent to kill. Nope, 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 nope. It wasn't to kill or harm. And it wasn't because they were looking for kicks on a Friday night. It's because it was what they were ordered to do. Let me say that again. It's because it was what they were ordered to do. Harold Dawson and Loudon Downey are sitting before you today because they did their job. Strong. <laughs> I think I want to be on a jury once. Winward Sec Latoon Bravo. Cuba. Corporal. Were you present at a meeting? Cuba Gooding Jr. Private Santiago betrayed a code we believe in very deeply, sir. Or it is a government counsel honestly asking this witness to testify as to how my clients felt on September 6th. That's speculation. Sustained. What was the order? Do not touch. Sir, he said Santiago wasn't to be touched. 
We know this. We know it. Corporal Hammerker, are you and Dawson in Downey's barracks room five minutes after this meeting? No, sir. Thanks. I have no more questions. <laughs> prove that. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to use a liar, liar, pants on fire defense. We can't prove coercion. Imagine you could. Uh, Judge, I believe he is a liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Is it possible to have a serious coronary condition where the initial warning signals were so mild as to escape a physician during a routine medical exam? Possibly. There would still be symptoms, though. What kind of symptoms? Mm. Yes. Shortness of breath? Yes. Fatigue? Of course. Look at how close we're getting! It's important. As Lord knows, if you put a man with a serious coronary condition on duty with a clean bill of health and that man died from a heart-related incident... Your fault. I have no more questions, Your Honor. Oh, I hope the jury was listening on that one. Was Willie Santiago poisoned? Yes. Thank you, sir. They put some doubt in that doctor. You could see it in his eyes. He's like, I don't know now. I, this makes me look bad. Sam Stone was an expert. Sam, she made a mistake. It's not relive it. Oh, she's proud of herself. Like, there is no mistake there. She's like, I'm down for what I did. Mented a weaker kid. They didn't like him, so they killed him. And why? Because he couldn't run very fast. All right. All right. That's personal for that guy. He was bullied as a child. Take the night off. Go see your wife. See your daughter, Joe. Go do whatever it is you do when you're not. <laughs> to go twiddle your thumbs, girl. Go knit. <laughs> Take a yoga class, babe. Why do you like them so much? Oof. Stop her dead in her tracks. Because they stand on a wall and they say nothing's going to hurt you tonight. Not on my watch. Okay. Sorkin, I see you. I'm pretty gripped. I think they did a good job casting Jack Nicholson. I think we're like bad guy, you know? Like, mm, something's rubbing me wrong about that one. But they're going to make it just muddy enough that it's like, should they have obeyed that order? Yes or no? Just watch the ball game. Come on. I hope they don't kiss or anything. Maybe they should to blow off some steam. I was wondering if dinner. how you'd feel about my taking you to dinner tonight. Okay. I mean, let's pretend for a minute that it would actually matter to this court that the guys were given an order. I can't prove it ever happened. Joe, we're gonna lose. And we're gonna lose huge. I don't think they're gonna lose huge. <laughs> yes, sir. Was his barracks ever in disorder? Yes, sir. Did he ever fall back on a run? All the time, sir. Mm -hmm. Did he ever, prior to the night of September 6th, receive a code red? No, sir. Dawson wouldn't allow it, sir. Aww. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'll rephrase. Jeffrey, did you ever want to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Why didn't you? Because Dawson would kick my butt, sir. They were protecting the weak link. They weren't going after him. Is there no book? No manual or pamphlet, no set of orders or regulations that lets me know that as a Marine, one of my duties is to perform <sighs> code reds? No, sir. It's no books. Under sir. the table. No further questions. Would you turn to the page in this book that says where the mess hall is, please? <laughs> well, Lieutenant Caffey, that's not in the book, sir. How did you know where the mess hall was if it's not in this book? Well, I guess I just followed the crowd at chow time, sir. Follow the crowd. <laughs> it's theater! It's a freaking play. Do I want to be a lawyer? <laughs> it's a show. I love this. This is so compelling, man. They still need a really big reveal. Who is in the back seat? Are you aware you're under subpoena? Yes. I'm also aware that the lives of two Marines are in your hands. The guy who ran. He was never going to be transferred off that base. You got the transfer order. It's got your signature. Yeah, I know. Forged. I signed him the morning you arrived in Cuba, five days after Santiago died. Where is he? The downtown lodge. <sighs> Eating him away. You just concentrate on Downey. I'm going to talk to Ross and tell him where we are. They really need that guy not to run, though, because they cannot prove that those documents were forged without him. If you accuse Kendrick or Jessup of any crime without proper evidence, you're going to be subject to a court martial, and that's something that's going to be stapled to every job application you ever fill out. Is that a threat, honey? You got bullied into that courtroom by the memory of a dead lawyer. Daddy. 
punch him. Hit him. You're a lousy softball player, Jack! Dawson received two marks of exceptional, but on this most recent report dated June 9th of this year, he received a rating of below average. Why? Hmm? I have two books at my bedside, Lieutenant. The Marine Corps Code of Conduct and the and Kim the Bible. Bible. Lance Corporal Dawson was given a below average rating because he had committed a crime. Of? Crime. Disobeying orders? What crime did he commit? He disobeyed an order. That's it. Did you order Lance Corporal Dawson and Private Downey to give Willie Santiago a code red? Lieutenant Kendrick, did no, you? No, I did not. Thank you. There's no flight at 11 o'clock. What the f are you trying to pull? Then why isn't it listening to Tower Chief's log? Deeper corruption. You're not going to find anything in the Andrews log. He can make an entire flight disappear? Probably. You're going to do fine. You think they'll let us go back to our platoon soon, ma'am? Oh my god. They want to go back. Get out of town. Get out of town! For my part, I've done as much as I can to bring the truth to light. I wasn't strong enough to stop it. Is he gonna kill himself? Is he gonna kill himself? Before he can get on the stand? No. <laughs> now you've said that your assault on Private Santiago is a result of an order that Lieutenant Kendrick gave you in your barracks room. I'm scared. Do you hear the music? Did you ever actually hear Lieutenant Kendrick order a code red? How? Private, answer the captain's question! I was given an order by my squad leader, Lance Corporal Harold W. Dawson. Okay, Dawson heard the code red order, relayed it to him. But, he, but that's bad for them. I'm getting stressed. I'm getting stressed. Downey wasn't in his room. That was an important piece of information, don't you think? It sucks. Downey kept that from his own lawyer. Markinson's dead. What? Oh, now they're finding out? We knew that. Fired a bullet into his mouth. Anyway, since we seem to be out of witnesses, I thought I'd drink a little. I still think we can win. How, babe? You put him on the stand and you get it from him. Oh, we get it from him! Yes! No, I really think Jessup could lie really hardcore. That's right! It's a court martial! Yes, Johnny! This After is... falsely accusing a. Tom Cruise jumping on the couch because he loves Katie Holmes' Tom Cruise. Follow the advice of the galactically stupid! That's, that's Oprah's couch, Tom Cruise. Guys. I'm sorry I lost your set of steak knives. Good dialogue. Call back, call back, call back. If you do good enough, you get the steak knives. Did you put Jessup on the stand? No. Nope. So there's really only one question. Would you? What would you do? He's gonna do it. I don't really see what choice they have. Oh, this is compelling, you guys. This is freaking compelling. I freaking love it. I'm gonna put Jessup on the stand! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the defensive and lead him right where he's dying to go. I don't know. That's it? That's the plan? That's the plan. How are you gonna do it? I have no idea. I need my bat. Ha! <laughs> it's an ego thing. Don't ever put that bat in the closet. He's gonna get some sort of stroke of inspiration in this closet. What's he gonna see? A tie? A pin, his father's pin. What is it? Walked right into that one. He does think better with that bat. Santiago's clothes. He said, "Get this to his parents." Yeah, sure. What's it gonna be? Don't do it. Don't put Jessup on the stand. What is she gonna say, Garth? What is she gonna say? Listen, Danny. You feel like he's not going to say it. Don't go for it. All rise. There's no shot he's going to say it. Defense calls Colonel Nathan Jessup. We call Johnny from The Shining. <laughs> is that his name? Oh, Jack Nicholson is so unhinged as an actor. 
Well, I just wasn't sure if the witness is aware that two days ago the colonel took his own life with a 45 caliber pistol. The witness is aware. Move on, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Okay, two others in the room. I noticed you're wearing your Class A dress uniform for your appearance in court today. As are you, Lieutenant. I wore utilities on the plane. You brought your dress uniform with you. I brought a change of clothes and some personal items. Santiago would have been packed. Santiago would have been packed. Four pairs of camouflage pants, three long sleeve khaki shirts, three pairs of boots. I'm wondering why Santiago wasn't packed. Hearing the news that he was finally getting his transfer, Santiago was so excited that do you know how many people he called? Zero. Yet everything he owned was hanging neatly in his closet. Can you explain that? Lead the horse to water. Lead the jury right there. What I do know is that he was set to leave the base at 0600. Now they're going to disprove that. Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. Is he going to do it? Is he going to ask it? Lieutenant Cathy. He's like, don't do it. Show us to me more. Show us to me more. Lieutenant, do you have anything further for this witness? Does she want him to ask it? Thanks, Danny. I love Washington. Excuse me. You're not excused. Fence exhibits Alpha and Bravo. I don't understand. You're admitting evidence of a flight that never existed. Oh, we believe it did, sir. You ever served in an infantry unit, son? No, sir. We follow orders, son. We follow we orders follow when people die. Orders. Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No, sir, you made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters in their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle, handle the this? truth! That's this movie. And those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. I'm shaking. This is You Can't Handle the Truth movie? I'm panicking. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. What's the truth, bro? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! <laughs> yeah. Please, the court, I suggest the members be dismissed. The witness has rights. Captain Ross... I can't, can't believe he got him to admit it. The hell is this? Colonel, what's going on? I did my job. I do it again. Nah, he's just admitted to a crime now, right? Captain Ross. What the hell is this? Colonel Jessup, you have the right to remain silent. Any statement I'm being made, charged with a crime. Against... You just admitted to it. Or administrative. I'm being charged with a crime? You have the right to consult with a lawyer prior to any further questions. This is funny. This lawyer may be a civilian That's what lawyer this is. By you, at... you can't handle the truth. You with the wrong marine! Do you understand these rights as I've just read them to you? You just gotta play with this man's ego. I'm a lawyer and an officer in the United States Navy. And you're under arrest, you son of a bitch. Tried to pin it on your two men. The witness is excused. <laughs> Lance Corporal Dawson, Private First Class Downey. On the charge of murder, not guilty. On the charge of conspiracy to commit murder. Number two. Not guilty. On the charge of conduct unbecoming a United States Marine. Guilty as charged. Uh. And you are ordered to be dishonorably discharged from the Marine Corps. Aw. Well, he said that whatever the jury wanted, that's okay with him. He was supposed to fight for people who couldn't fight for themselves. He was supposed to fight for Willie. Can't breathe. Sir. You don't need to wear a patch in your arm to have honor. It's the performance that's giving it weight. Doesn't have weight if you don't have good actors. Rodriguez, what exactly were these guys going to testify to? Going to testify under oath that they had absolutely no recollection of it. And handsome to it, didn't you think? <laughs> so they were, they were a, pl a plant to put pressure on Jessup to admit it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Dad, I did you proud. <laughs> Guys, that was emotional. I'm like, kind of teary. Let's talk about it. A Few Good Men from 1992. That's like kind of right up my alley, you guys. Like I love a courtroom drama like that. And it is drama, but it's like got pizzazz, you know? Like Tom Cruise really just kind of made a meal out of this movie. Uh, I really like this movie. I like it for for ways that I don't think we often see on the channel. Like usually it's kind of like a, a cool action sequence or effects or performances, sure, or cinematography or whatever, but it's like this is like a movie I like in the same way I like The Departed. It's just like the story is woven in a way that just like tickles tickles all the receptors in my brain. It's like a blooming onion unfolds beautifully. It allows you to feel like you're keeping up with them, and it kind of unfolds in a way where you feel like you are part of the team you are a lawyer you're kind of figuring out information as they're figuring it out it even makes you feel really good if you figure it out like a second or two beforehand like you start putting the puzzle pieces together um and then they'll give you a little break give you a few more scenes in between before we find out yeah of course that log was forged you know but you kind of filed that away yourself so this is like the way I like to be stimulated and that's Aaron Sorkin for you I didn't even find the dialogue as speedy as it could have been. I mean, Sorkin is known for some quick, quick dialogue and it's just like so much dialogue. This wasn't as much as I thought, but it is precise and it's deliberate and it is just handled exquisitely. And that ending scene with Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson, that's one for the record books. Holy sh Oh, I knew to say something and I didn't. That guy in the bar was Aaron Sorkin. I knew it. I know what Aaron Sorkin looks like. Christopher Guest being the doctor he looked so much older than I remember that I, I didn't clock him. But I in my intro, I knew Christopher Guest was in this from the opening credits. Okay. And um, pleasantly surprised and just beyond tickled that this is You Can't Handle the Truth. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. But let's go to the trivia section. I don't have much to look up. I'm thinking that um, this would have been shot in D.C. Okay. So original play was inspired by an actual code red at Guantanamo Bay. Oh, interesting. Was the fence shooting, because we never really tied that back in. The fence shooting thing was a little bit of a red herring. It was to say like, look, they had motive to kill Santiago. And it was like, they were never found guilty on that. Get rid of that. Whoa, uh, this is chilling if this, whoa. An unnamed executive gave Aaron Sorkin a note. Tom Cruise and Demi Moore aren't going to sleep with each other. Why is Demi Moore a woman? He responded, I said the obvious answer. Women have purposes other than to sleep with Tom Cruise. He claimed that the incident was his worst experience as a screenwriter. Oh, that just makes my skin crawl. The literal heebie-jeebies from that. That's disgusting. Most shot on a Culver City soundstage. So anything that wasn't an exterior was Culver City. The Defense Department refused to endorse the film, meaning the filmmakers couldn't utilize any military installations. Sorkin says he enjoyed working for Rob Reiner, even though the director ordered him to make countless rigorous revisions. One major revision on, like, the play. This is crazy. In the play, a doctored logbook is the smoking gun. That gives uh, Caffey the break. Reiner insisted Tom Cruise's Caffey win the case on courtroom skills alone. It's kind of what this movie was about, his skills. Kevin Pollack said, greatest experience he's ever had working on a film. You know, they captured a little bit of magic in this. I just felt like it was pretty electric. This, this... This movie had a pulse for me. Can't really explain it. It's just a feeling. Tom Cruise would often stay after rehearsals to work on perfecting his role. I, the man in this movie st uh, working on the case 20 hours a day, in, to me, that's Tom Cruise. Like, that's who Tom Cruise is. Oh my God, Aaron Sorkin's trademark is the two characters walking down a hallway doing the walk and talk. Moving toward camera. The walk and talk originated in this movie. You can't handle the truth. Go to number 92 on the 100 Greatest Movie Lines by premiere in 2007. I thought that that delivery was next level. I'm going to say they made this movie for $50 million for actor salaries, $41 million. I think my, inf my inflation is just four Oscars. I'm going to say Cruz, Nicholson, Best Picture, Best Screenplay. Best Picture, Jack Nicholson, Best Sound, Best Film Editing. No nomination for Tom Cruise. And no nomination for writing. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I feel good about that. 
So you've seen my reaction to A Few Good Men from 1992. Now sound out below. What do you think of this one? Did you catch this in 92 in theaters? My favorite question to ask. I don't know if I would have been... The, the crazy thing is, I think Aaron Sorkin sells this movie to me now. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see this Sorkin picture. No. I think in 92, you want to see Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, and Demi Moore. And everyone's like, who's Aaron Sorkin? Maybe. I could be wrong. But West Wing was like late 90s. If you went in 92, why did you go? What did you think of it? it seems like it was a success. It seems like people really liked it. Yeah. I think it really holds up. Obviously, duh. It's one of the greats. And just let me know. If you want more from me or to see my full length to this, I highly suggest you hit the link below and meet me on Patreon. I would really appreciate the support. If you haven't already, give this video a like, a comment, and a subscribe. If you haven't, it really helps the channel. And you know the drill. On that note, I'm going to go eat. <laughs>